How do I survive and also thrive? That's the question I began asking myself when I was diagnosed with colorectal cancer in my late 20s. It's a question many of you may be asking yourselves right now in 2020, as we're mostly stuck at home in the middle of this global pandemic. That question goes to the heart of resilience. My journey through cancer and survivorship eventually helped me see that the power of resilience comes from practicing it as a skill. Now, resilience may be a buzzword these days, but it wasn't always so. Back when I was diagnosed in 2006, resilience wasn't really talked or written about. Trust me, I know. I looked on Google, on Amazon, at the libraries. After all, I'm a lawyer, so I know how to research issues. I searched far and wide and read what I could find, which was very little. So without much to go on, I fumbled my way through, learning several important lessons along the way. The first lesson I learned is that surviving adversity didn't make me resilient. As I began cancer treatment, my oncologist described my kind of cancer as the kind with the little C, not the big C. So surviving wasn't really a question. It was a given until it wasn't. After months of treatment, I had a CAT scan and hoped for the best, but I got the worst, abnormal. The more tests were run, the more doctors became worried. I was told I needed to fight for my life and not worry about having children. All I could do was put one foot in front of the other, and even that was so hard and done through many tears. Families, friends, and even strangers rallied around me, and I temporarily relocated myself to a preeminent cancer center in Texas. Even though we didn't know what was really going on in my body, my doctors told me I should agree to the most aggressive and life-altering forms of chemotherapy and radiation so that I would at least have a chance of survival. I couldn't do it. My head and my heart told me that I needed to really know what was going on first. So instead, I had a grueling surgery, which miraculously found no recurrence. I was relieved <laughs> for sure. But that relief didn't magically heal me or return me to normal life. Quite simply, resilience didn't happen just because I had survived. I had to figure out how to thrive in spite of the adversity. That led me to the second lesson I learned, that resilience is a skill you build through practice over time. I really wanted to bounce back, but the reality was there was no going back. I had lost my 20-something sense of invincibility. Life was different for me now, physically and emotionally. I was like Humpty Dumpty, broken apart and pieced back together with all the missing pieces, glue, and cracks to show for it. I had to be able to find a bathroom on a moment's notice. I lacked the energy that I used to have and wrestled with fatigue. As if that wasn't enough, I had a constant shadow lurking behind me, the prospect of recurrence. Every ache, pain, scan, and follow-up appointment came with worry and fear. Through trial and error, I found ways to adapt. I started working towards acceptance, focusing on what I could control and making choices accordingly. I started living in small segments of time, sometimes a week, sometimes a day, sometimes even a moment. Eventually, as one author so aptly described it, I began living between office visits. Each day, I tried to focus on gratitude, finding reasons to be grateful. Doing so helped me see that ordinary things and moments could be truly extraordinary. It also gave me different perspectives, which later became my pathway to creativity and greater resilience. As I practiced acceptance, living in small segments of time and gratitude, the earth kept spinning and the world kept moving. I fell in love and got married. I argued and won cases in court. I not joined a nonprofit board. I battled the dark days of infertility and eventually got my dream of becoming a mother. While I was pregnant with my twins, I changed jobs, leaving the private practice of law. I joined a large company as an in-house lawyer, handling labor and employment law issues which was my area of expertise. In that role, I became a creative problem solver. I used my ability to see different perspectives, 
to help find new options and approaches. As I honed my creative problem-solving skills, I gained more and more confidence in my ability to work through any situation. Much to my surprise, my professional work was making me resilient. With that realization, I started looking for ways to practice creative problem-solving at work and at home. I started asking our leaders about their business challenges and obstacles and helping them work through them. I started doing word puzzles and playing games in my free time. The years went by and then adversity struck again. That's when I learned the third lesson. The practice of resilience is what gives it its power. I was 11 weeks pregnant when an ultrasound showed that the heart had stopped beating. It was a heart I had seen beating twice before. The miracle of that pregnancy made it such a devastating loss. All I could do once again was put one foot in front of the other. I made arrangements to cover work. We told our children who had been so excited to become big brothers. I went to the hospital, which is the place I really try to avoid, for the necessary medical care. Even as I recovered physically, I was heartbroken and consumed by grief. The skills of gratitude and creative problem solving that I had been practicing to build my own resilience seemed inauthentic and just plain wrong. It wasn't a problem to be solved. As I lived in small segments of time and tried to work towards acceptance, an amazing thing happened. The resilience that I had grown in myself over the years of practicing it as a skill had lifted me up and it was carrying me through. It wasn't easy but resilience made it easier. That's the power of resilience and practice is what makes it possible. Look, there's no one path to resilience. We each have to find our own way. So find your own resilience routine and start practicing it as a skill. There is no better time than now in the middle of this global pandemic. To keep ourselves safe, we have to figure out new ways of doing things and getting what we need. We have to figure out what we can control and what we cannot control. Living in small segments of time can move us towards acceptance. As the earth keeps spinning and life moves on, we can be grateful. Gratitude helps us see the world differently. We may even find new ways of working with what we have. That's creative problem solving. Spend time getting and being creative. Maybe that's gardening. Maybe that's cooking. Maybe that's painting. The possibilities are really endless. It's the simple act of creating that is a way to practice building resilience. So when you find your own way and grow your own resilience, please share it with others. Why, you may ask? Well, because resilience can be practiced as a skill not only by individuals, but also by teams, organizations, and communities. When that happens, resilience grows exponentially, broadening and deepening its impact and power. So back to that question, how do we survive and thrive? We do so by harnessing the power of resilience when we practice it as a skill. Thank you. Mm -hmm.